Welcome to Conversations Live. For more than a decade, we've brought you the best in books, entertainment, celebrity interviews, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us first. Now celebrating 17 years of broadcasting success, here's your host, Cyrus Webb. And welcome back, everyone, to Conversations Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. But for our radio audience here in Mississippi, at WYAD 94.1 FM and WYADonline.com, we're glad that you all could be with us. Also, just joining us are our friends at iHeartRadio and Amazon Music Podcast. We're glad you all could be with us as well. We're excited to welcome back actor and also narrator Robert Bathurst to our program to talk about not only his amazing career, but also what it's been like for him to narrate some amazing books, including the new bestseller by Louise Penny called The Madness of Crowds. The book is out now, already a bestseller, both in print as well as the audio book edition. We're going to talk to Robert not only about what it's been like for him to give a voice to these characters, but also we'll let you guys know how you can be able to get the book for yourself. Robert, glad to have you back on with us. Sorry, right, hello again. Robert, I think the the interesting thing about these books by by Louise Penny is that she's been able to bring together these amazing characters with these, I mean, these storylines that really keep us gripped. But the reading of them by you have really kind of fascinated readers as well. What has it been like for you to see the way that people have responded, not only to the books but also to the audiobook editions? I'm really exciting. I mean, it's it's I. I mean, first of all, the, the books have, are, are at the top of their game. Uh, they've, um, or Louise Penny, it's her 17th book, The Madness of Crowds. It's the 17th in the uh, Inspector Gamache Three Pines series. And she's still raking in the awards, and she's still and getting great figures for, for, the, for the print version. And, and, as, and the, you know, the sideshow, the, the, the audio book, which I'm really privileged to read. I took it over from Ralph Cosham, who, who sadly died after 10 of the books. He, was, um, he passed away, and uh, I was given the nod to, to read, and I've done the last seven of them. Um, but the series, um, well, in, in print form, has been, has been really successful, and, and in audiobooks, uh, people seem to be uh, responding extremely well to that. I make no presumption that they will. It's, I you know, you never think that just because it's been a success before, it's going to work again. Right. But um, I love reading them, and I love the characters. Right. And and I think that is the thing. You have been able to bring so many great books to life through your voice, Robert. Of course, people know you, as I mentioned, on screen as well as an actor. What has this extension been like for you as a narrator to be able to use your gifts as a creator to be able to tell these stories through your voice? I love, I love my narrating. And, and I, there was the last book, um, uh, the, All the Devils Are Here, it had 40 characters, and uh, 20, about 20 of those were French. <laughs> the, big, the big aim was to try and not to make it sound like Inspector Clouseau, and uh, so it's. I, and I love taking on those characters, and I love, I love knowing. I'm really well directed by Lorelai King, who's a fine uh, voice artist in her own right, and she's a very, very good director. And and we shall try and get the, the movements. It's almost written in sort of symphonic form. with lots of different movements throughout the book, and you try and get that pace, you get that that quality, and and that variation that Louise writes. And, and the richness of the characters you, you aim to find. And you just, I imagine them, I see them in my head. I, you, and the big step is to, is, to, uh, is to land them with the audience and, and not get in the way of what the author intended. Do you find that in narrating these characters, Robert, and I haven't asked you this question in the times that you've been on this program before, but have you found that, that they stick with you just as much as if you were bringing them to life on, on camera? Absolutely, I, I, I think they're extremely vivid, and that comes from the writing first and foremost. Um, but they are extremely vivid. There are, there are major characters and there are minor characters, but none of the characters are minor in in, in quality, and they all all have a um, have a quality which which gives them the right to be in that scene. Um, and so, yeah, all the characters do live. I mean, I can sort of see them. Um, I, I I get their different you know, timbres and so forth. Some of them have to be created for just that book. Um, and you just, I work on them. I work on them pretty hard. And you just, you just try to uh, find, a, find a variety. Not, not so that you think that, my goodness, there, there are 40 different actors in this. You know, it's, not, it's not a technical exercise like that. It's just finding a, a, different, a different rhythm, a different timbre, where the voice comes from, where it comes in the face and all that. So it's... Um, I mean, I started in radio, so I've been, I've always, always worked um, uh, in in sort of radio and uh, and sort of close-up stuff, as well as the theatre and the telly. Yeah. But um, 
Yeah, I, absolutely. I think the characters, as written, they're vivid, and and I uh, just uh, try and try and uh, try and color them up. So, talk to us about this book, The Madness of Crowds. What was it like for you to be able to, for one thing, to read the story and to see where Louise uh, took uh, took the inspector this time? But what was it that stood out to you about this book? Well, it's written in in response to the last crazy eighteen months. Uh, it's called The Madness of Crowds, and and. So as is, it's, it's almost, I almost tried to say it, but the, the world has been in, in paralysis in yeah. some in some way. We've we've been we've been all given the same set of events and the same fears, and people have reacted in very different ways to 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 those fears, and people have have, have met it in, in in different in very different ways, and the um, the debate surrounding those different ways of reacting has been fierce. And uh, and very febrile, and uh, so yeah, she's 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 sort of taken a rec- the recovery, a future point when when we're all free of it, and that's when she starts starts the book, but very much in the context of of having been through it, right. and uh, having in in the start of her book having come out the other side, which of course you know we, we aren't there yet, um, but um, it's so, but it's 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 taking into account the very very fragile sort of nature that uh, of, of of society as 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 we find it and and, and the differences that have uh, rhythm us well it is now available for our audience to be able to get again the madness of crowds by louise penny you can get it in hardcover kindle and of course the audiobook which is narrated by our guest robert bathurst make sure you guys head over to amazon.com and get it for yourself robert it is always a pleasure speaking with you thank you so much for joining us again really appreciate the time Thank you for having me, Cyrus. Hey, glad to do it. And we thank your audience for tuning in to another great segment of Conversations Live. Until next time, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Live. Now let's go make today amazing. Take care.